Before I actually show you the developer poor, I want to talk about the developer poor. Now, I couldn't do this at the time that I was actually working with the plate because the clock was ticking on the plate drying out. And in fact, the plate got a little bit more dry than I would like anyways, just between me shooting the plate and moving all of the filming equipment back into the darkroom. So here's a quick little separate primer on developing a plate. So I like to pour developer out of a small beaker like this. This is a 50 milliliter beaker, and this gives me enough developer for anywhere from a four x five up to an eight x 10. Now what I usually do is I put a little bit of developer in here, typically 10 to 15 milliliters for a four x five, more if I'm shooting a bigger plate. I pour the developer in, <coughs> and then I pour it onto the plate. And this is another thing where you need to have a game plan going in. So what I like to do is pour from left to right across the plate, and I pour using the rounded edge of the beaker, which just gives me a little bit smoother, I guess, shape to the flow of water coming onto the plate. Sorry, the flow of developer. What I like to do here is I like to pour from left to right with the plate angled a little bit down starting with the plate angle a little bit left so that it covers the left edge of the plate. And then as I pour, I sweep and I tilt the plate over to the right to cover the entire thing. And then I rock it back. The analogy that you'll hear over and over again is that it should be like waves at the beach. You want it to go down and then back. And then you agitate it a little bit as it develops. Now development time is gonna vary with developer. Um, with probably the most popular developers, which tend to be very strong, you're gonna to wanna to keep your development to around 10 to 15 seconds. Any longer than that, and you can start getting artifacts of overdevelopment, which tend to take the form of these kind of tiger stripes on your plate. With a more restrained developer, you can develop for longer. Um, so using the developer that we mixed yesterday, I tend to go for much longer times, up to 20 to 30 seconds sometimes a little bit longer if I'm pushing it. Um, I think the potassium nitrate in this developer really helps restrain it, and it helps keep the developer from just getting out of control when you go for longer development times. That's why I really love this developer. Once you get to a point where you can see essentially shadow detail in your images, you wanna start rinsing the developer off. Now, for four x five plates, I use a squirt bottle when I, which you'll see in the next in the next section of this video. I use a squirt bottle and I go back and forth all up and down the plate. I rock it back and forth. I try to get the developer off as evenly as possible. For bigger plates, I just take a plastic water bottle, fill it with water, and I pour the entire thing out onto the plate. Another strategy is just fill a tray ahead of time with water. Um, that way you can just drop the plate right into it, rock it back and forth, and that'll do a very good job of quickly clearing the developer off the plate. You wanna get the, you wanna get the developer off pretty quickly because it's still, you know, it's still acting on the plate while you're in the process of rinsing it off. So those are kind of the available methods for getting the developer off the plate. And now let's go ahead and take a look at what our plate looks like when developed. All right, welcome back to the darkroom. Let's go ahead and develop our plate. So what I've got in front of me here are my rinse bottle. Make sure you have your rinse bottle handy in the darkroom because you're gonna be very sad if you start development and, don't have, and then realize after the fact you don't have any water on hand to stop it with. I've got my developer in a little small beaker here. I've got about 20 milliliters worth. I would normally use even a little bit less than this you want to use as little developer as possible, but when you're first getting started, it's okay to go a little bit on the high side just for the sake of making sure that you get it done. I've got a little kind of grungy 5x7 photo tray that I use as a basin to catch the spilled developer while I'm developing. And of course, I have my plate holder. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull the plate out here. I'm gonna hold it the same way I did when I was pouring it in the first place, kind of like a waiter holding a tray. And now I'm just gonna take my developer and run it across one edge and then let it kind of splash back at me.
and rock it back and forth a little bit. Now what I'm looking for is the image starting to come out. I'm beginning to see some details here. I like to rotate it in my hand while I'm developing so I can see the image right side up. Except that's actually upside down. Or is it? It can be very difficult to tell while the developer is doing its thing. There we go. And once you start to see a clear image with details in the shadows, it's time to stop to begin stopping the development. Because it takes some time to rinse the developer off, and it's still going to be acting during that time. So I like to use a squirt bottle like this for 4x5 plates. I just kind of spray it back and forth across the entire surface of the plate. And the way you can tell that you're done is when the water runs clear and smoothly off the surface of the plate. If the surface of the plate still looks greasy, it means that there's still developer on it. So what you want to do is just wash it until the water runs cleanly and straight off of that plate. And then keep rinsing it a little bit longer just to be safe. There's no harm done by adding more water. And you want to make sure there's absolutely no developer left on this plate when it goes into the fixer. I like to give the back a quick rinse too. And then I can just set that right on the corner of my developing tray. I'm going to dry my hands off. And then I'm going to go turn the lights on in this room so we can put the plate in the fixer. Be right back. Okay, the lights are now on in the dark room, which is not a problem because after washing the developer off the surface of the plate, it is now light safe. So, I'm just going to give this a little bit more water before I put it into the fixer bath. Make sure that developer is good and cleaned off. And then, we just drop the plate into the fixer bath the same way that we initially put it into the silver bath. The big difference, of course, is that this surface, or sorry, the front surface of this tank is clear, so we can watch the fixing process as it unfolds in front of us. The plate goes in, and pretty quickly you're going to see the image vanish and then reappear in all its glory. Now what I usually like to do here is I give it a little bit of more time. The rule of thumb here is that you want to leave it in the fixer for about twice as long as it takes to clear the image. Sometimes I like to push it a little bit longer to see if I can get these collodion ridges along the edges of the plate where we first poured the collodion off to clear. But it looks like this is about as good as I'm going to get. I don't want to push it too far, so I'll pull it out of the fixer. And I'm just going to rinse the fixer off the surface of the plate to begin with. And then we're going to go ahead and take this plate in to rinse off in the rinse. Now since my so-called dark room is really just a garage with no running water, I'm going to go ahead and wash the plates indoors. So this is just my kitchen sink and what I have here is, as I mentioned before, a Patterson archival print washer. So this is connected to the kitchen sink and the trick here is we want to get a very thin stream of water flowing from this little spigot that comes with it. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit to get some water flowing in the first place. And you can kind of see how it circulates around the edges and back through the center. Now as this starts to fill up, I'm going to bring this back down to a trickle. I'm going to go ahead and just load this plate in at the top of the print washer. So what will happen now is over time, the water will flow all around the washer. It'll eventually come up over this little lip at the bottom. And then once it gets high enough, it will flow 
through this tube out into the sink where it drains. And I'm just going to leave that for about 15 to 25 minutes, potentially longer. Uh, you can't really over rinse these plates, but you can very much under rinse them. So I recommend just leaving them in the rinse for as long as you have time to accommodate. After this, we'll put it on the rack, dry it, and then go ahead and varnish and finish off the plate. In the next video, I'll show you how to really finish off the plate with a coat of varnish. But before I leave you for now, I want to talk about routine maintenance in between shots, as well as take a look at the photo that we just made and analyze some of its flaws. So first of all, in between photos, you should always be cleaning your plate holder. At a minimum, you want to take either a paper towel or a Q-tip and wipe out any residue of collodion or silver nitrate that's in the kind of frame on the inside of the plate holder. Periodically, you're going to want to wash it with something as well. So since it's been a while since I used this plate holder, I'm just going to give it a quick rub down with a little bit of alcohol. Now this is my denatured ethanol. Uh, this is just a bottle that's sold as fireplace fuel, but it works well enough for cleaning. So I'm just going to take this on a corner of paper towel and wipe it around the inside. Q-tips are actually really good for this, but I am unfortunately out of them right now. And now I don't want to leave whatever may have been in that denatured alcohol in the plate holder, so I'm going to do a second wipe down with just a little bit of distilled water. I'm going to get all around that inner frame, just make sure that I've got this plate holder good and cleaned out. So the reason you want to make sure you do this is because if you don't, you will get artifacts around the edges of your plates and sometimes even much further into your plate from the dirty plate holder. So you can see some of those in the image that we just made here. The other big defect is these kind of streaky lines that you can spot in a couple of places on the plate. Now, I think there's two culprits behind these. The first is that I let this plate get much more dry than I typically would. The reason for that is simply that I was making an instructional video, and after taking the plate out and putting it in the plate holder, I then proceeded to drag my two video cameras outside, stage the scene, set up the microphone, and then expose the plate. And then I dragged everything back into the dark room before I pulled the plate out and developed it. I was a little bit uncomfortable with the amount of time I was taking, and I suspected that I may have to do a second exposure. But it turned out that it came out passably enough. So I just gone ahead and kept this plate to show you some of the things that can go wrong, even though it is overall a mostly usable plate. The other culprit is my developer pour. The developer pour that you saw today was definitely not ideal. Um, specifically, I poured the developer too fast at first. So you don't want to drop a bunch of developer onto one point on the plate because you'll get something like this, right? As you can see, these defects just radiate out from this one spot here. And that is exactly where my initial developer pour hit the plate. So that one's on me. I got a little bit of nerves from the fact that I was being recorded. That tends to happen to me if I'm being watched or recorded. It's something to watch out for when you're showing other people the process, if you get nervous around others. But in general, you want to to try to get your developer pour just a little bit more smooth than that. Ideally, you want the developer to flow onto the plate and not really splash onto any one particular part of it because the turbulence that causes will pull silver off of that one particular spot. It can give you a dark spot. Or if, as in this case, you have existing issues from a dry or dirty plate, it can exacerbate them right around that spot. So, Try to keep your developer pores, your developer pores smooth. Try to keep your plate holders clean, and the best you can, keep your plates artifact free.
And now I'm going to finish wiping this off. I also like to wipe the inside of the tablet that comes into contact with the plate. And then I'm going to go clean up the rest of my dark room and get ready to dry the plate and uh, put on a layer of varnish. <laughs>